Hello and welcome back to another creative tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over layer masks and using this lovely little fish as an example of what you can do for that. Sorry for the crinkling, I'm taking out my tablet pen of its bag. Alright, anyway, um, so a layer mask is a mask that's only affecting the layer that it's being applied to and it, um, it's a non-destructive way of doing it. So instead of going to filter, blur, a bunch of merged layers, and never you know, getting back to editing this, like let's say if I want to add more plans, like okay, we'll have to redo the blur all over again, or open up a new file, or make that a separate layer, or whatever, you won't have to do that. And I'll show you how that works here. This is the filter mask and it's for the background layer, the plants, and the rocks. So as you can see, I can turn that layer on and off. Sorry, this is a big file, so it's a little slow for loading. Um, it's affecting everything, but not the fish. Turn this filter mask off. It kind of throws your eyes off like crazy. <laughs> it, it's not blurred anymore. So that is really good for me, because that means I can go back and add some more detail into these leaves and not lose that blur um, filter that I wanted to use. I don't want to lose the settings or the appearance of it or anything like that. Turn that back on. And now it's all blurred here. So the way a mask works is I believe a white. Oh, why is this doing that? I'm on the wrong thing. I'm on the wrong tool. Sorry. Um, I'm on the brush mode and I have white selected and that's going to act like my paint color. So if I start to just color the white over the eyes and everything else, it's being added into the blur. Right? And if you do black, that's taking it out. So it kind of gives you a interesting effect to your image. So I'm just going to take all of them and take up all this back into focus. Right? These clearly in focus. Right? And then some of the rocks I put back in. If I want that to be in focus, I can just take the black and erase it out. But I don't want it to be. Right? And that's, oops, and that's pretty much how the filter mask works. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to add another type of mask. Um, let's see, we can add transparency mask. Move that up. So, if I use the black, I don't want the background to show up in certain areas for whatever reason. Actually, I can even just use my selection tool here. I'm just gonna go around. And then I can, oops, oh my gosh, can't move my buttons today. Select uh, invert, and I can fill that. And then I can just go back in and refine it with the brush tool. So what I'm doing is, technically I'm getting rid of the background, but I'm doing it in a non-destructive manner. I am just saying, hey, just use this filter mask or transparency mask to turn this off for now, and then uh, when I'm ready, I'll paint it, or you know, bring it back in, or I won't. Right? I don't really have to sit here and do all this, but you get the idea. So, let's get rid of some more. Oh, add that. Oops. Add that back in. So, white is adding the, I guess, technically taking away that filter mask, and black is adding it. So, just see white as the eraser, and black as the color that you're drawing with. Alright. That's cool. And then if I hide that transparency mask, 
the background is still there. So obviously I can move this around, I can have it affect only the foliage, I can move it somewhere else to affect something different, but I want it to affect the entire background, everything under the fish layers in my uh, layers dock right here. Move that down so you guys can get a better look. So hey look I didn't name it. This is the goldfish layer. Um, that's cool, I didn't get the, well, gold fists, it's, that's good, that's good call now. This is the shadows for, um, the background, and that's just some extra shadows, and then these are the filters. So everything under the fish will only affect the background. So let's add transform mask, so we're going to move that up. Alright, so we have the transformation mask. So we're going to take this and, let's see, we can use, let's do like this weird perspective one. So we can move that here, move that there, you know, give it some, I don't know. No idea. Yeah, I guess that's fine. <laughs> a little bit of a weird perspective, so we'll do that. Hit enter and apply it. So you can see here it's updating in the transfer mask. Take it off, it's back to normal. This is really nice, like instead of duplicating the layer to see if it, what you're going to do is going to look good, you can use a transform mask and save yourself some time and headaches and not like ruin it, you know? Don't have to ruin your image. Non-destructive editing, it's a huge thing, it's, you know, I mean, really, really lame here and say it's really hip right now. <laughs> In a lot of programs, it's it's a big deal, okay? It's just a big deal. And the reason that thing is affecting the bubbles is because the bubbles are on a layer all their own outside of this com this full group here. This is a complicated um, little layer system I have going on. Alright, I'm going to delete that and that. And the last... But not least, I'm going to just turn this off here. Turn that off, turn that off, and that. Alright, so this is my line art. We all know what the colorized mask is. Oops, so we're going to add that. And it applies it to the layer that you've selected. And we all know how that works. It, you know, it's you know, the brush tool. Oops. Wow, I can't click for anything today. Green, blah 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 blah. Wait for that to update. There we go. Okay, I don't know why that took so long, but it's just like the colorized mask tool here. It does the same thing. Instead of, but instead of like hitting the button, you can just add the layer itself. I don't really know why. It well, actually, it probably took a while because I have all this other stuff going on. Okay, so last um, feature is. Or the, the mask you can add is the local selection, and so real quick, this is toggling the selection on and off. You, and if you add more than one selection or local selection layer to the color layer or whatever layer it is, you can't have them on at the same time. It has to be one or the other, or whichever one it is. Because when you do more than one, it's going to turn the other one off, which is fine, not a bad thing. So I only want I want to change. Let's just turn the shadow stuff off real quick. I want to change the color of her skirt here. So I'm going to go to my wand and to my tool options. I don't want this selected. I'm turning this fuzziness down to... Why are you doing this? One. I'm going to go ahead and select. Oh, I'm on the wrong. There we go. Take that. So as you can see, even though I'm not on my like line art layer, it's taking in all the information from all the layers that are on above it. So we'll have to refine this a little bit. So I'm going to take this curve here. Oops. I'm going to make sure I'm adding to the selection that's already there. I'm just going to make some circles and add this in. I 
think that's good enough for what we're doing. So then I'm going to go back to my color layer. I'm going to hit B for brush and I'm going to change this to blue. This is cool, right? That that's like well, no biggie. We want to make selections already, but if I turn this off, obviously I can go back and change it there. But if I turn this on, I can always go back and change the skirt color. I can always go back and um, alter the shadow here if I want. Actually, I kind of like that color, but not for this. <laughs> anyway, um, so I can actually add another one. As another local selection, we'll turn the first one off and we'll go here. We'll turn it on. You can see that the first one we did has a little white area here. That's the area that we kind of saved technically. So we're going to go to the second selection here. Whoops. Go back to our wand tool and I guess we'll just change the horse body. Whoops. Make sure I am. I have to deselect everything first. <sighs> deselect. And then I can go to the wand and just add a new one. There we go. And then to add in the legs and make sure to add these two boxes here. Not perfect, but it's good enough for now. And let's change the color to. I guess we'll just go with the pink. Right? Very um fantasy like, I guess. Alright, but now I'm like, okay, I'm done with that layer. I can go back to the skirt and I can go back to the body. I can just flip between the two. And if I don't want any of those, I can just hit shift control A and turn that off completely and then go back to my oops. Do you select them, please? There we go. Turn that off here. And uh, I can go ahead and change this to everything. Take that shadow off so you can see it. So yeah, it's really helpful. And if I don't want to affect the skirt, I don't want to affect the horse body. Put some pink polka dots. Looks a little diseased, but that's fine. <laughs> Not affecting the skirt in any way. But if I turn it off, now there's polka dots on the skirt. And that's how you can use the selection masks to your advantage. So on, off, on, off. So yeah. Uh, so Krita did not appreciate me turning on and off the layers rapidly and crashed. So I don't advise turning them on and off um, as quickly as you can. I don't know, how, I'm, I actually don't know how new those are. I think they've been around for a while. But yeah, don't turn them on and off. Like back and forth as many times as you can per second. That's just bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for um, these layer masks here. Uh, they're very, very helpful as you've seen. I've definitely used them to my advantage and they're non-destructive, which is probably the most important aspect of them as well. Anytime you can have a non-destructive feature in a program or available to you, really use that because it it's so much better than duplicating a layer and saving the old version or saving a different file version and saying, oh, well, file, file version 10 is the one before I did the transform, you know? And it's even really helpful if you want to try out different uh, color um, options for something and you can just quickly make a new layer, use the um, selection or local selection tool and just turn those layers on and off, you know, as need be when you're done. So, yeah, definitely practice them and use them to your advantage. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, um, let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, I have noticed that some uh, comments went to my spam section. And I didn't realize it until now, and they were two months old, and I'm so sorry. If you do have a question and you haven't seen me answer within 24 hours, um, reach out to me on Twitter or email or something and, and let me know there. Because it's possible that YouTube is just being stupid because it is YouTube, right? We all know how it is. And uh, don't forget to support me in my support links below. And make sure to like and subscribe to this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.